Matt Lang here from Produce Like a Pro. I hope you're doing marvelously well. And I am here with Tyler from Eventide. They're doing some incredible work here with the Split EQ, and I thought he would tell you all about it. Thanks, Matt. How are you doing? How's your show been? Fantastic. Split EQ is incredible. Um, I've been using Split EQ since a very early version of it, and um, you can also find a bunch of my presets within Split EQ, but as far as doing everything from separating the transients from actual tonal sources, whether it's drums, or like my personal favorite is actually using it on uh, melodic percussive instruments like a piano or even a guitar, where you can then, you know, you could take the transient right off of the guitar, and then it almost sounds like a reverse guitar, but it's not. Right. It just, you know, it becomes like almost like there's an audio fade. Yeah, you can get sort of like a bowed, a bowed guitar effect, or when you put that yeah. on a piano, right? And you can pan the transients too. Exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, I love it as a creative tool. It obviously, like, I've used it within mix purposes also when I want to, like, specifically, like, bring up the transient just to, like, 3K of my snare drum or something right. like that. But as a creator and a sound designer, where I get most excited about Split EQ is really abusing the transient versus tonal properties. Right. That's why you're a pro. That's why we're a producer of the pro. That, that, that's why I'm a pro who produces with Eventide software. Yeah. And they are obviously, like, some of my favorite tools, and I've been using Eventide for forever. So, you have a wonderful gift to give away. We do. We have three licenses for Split EQ that Matt has generously approved us to give away. Sign up below. You're going to sign up below yeah. and at this link below and there it, it's an incredible plugin, honestly. Like I I truly love it. I use it. Split EQ, much like all of Eventide's products, are truly inspirational and Please do yourself a favor and sign up at the link. Hey guys, thank you for coming. Thank you, Produce Like a Pro. We're here at NAM. We're introducing, uh, relaunching uh, an, uh, one of the Group 2's most popular designs on microphones. It's the AP1B FED. It's a FED uh, microphone large uh, diaphragm condenser. The uh, thing is that the design is like a non disc. Uh, old brass capsule, like old vintage mics, like Neumann, Telefunken, has great uh, detail for vocals, acoustic guitars, really good top end without being harsh, and great body, a lot of detail on that. Um, we modified a little bit of the body of the, to uh, improve the acoustics of the amp, the, of the mic, so it sounds great. It, it'll be out, we hope, uh, by the end of the year. With that run, it's gonna be around $500. Also, we, um, we have a pop filter here that we also modified to make it larger for, to fit vintage microphones. The cool thing about this uh, pop filter is, is mesh, so it doesn't block the air like a regular uh, fabric pop filter. But the, cool, the coolest thing is that it's magnetic, so you can take it, if you have sessions at a different studio, you can take it with you and put it on, um, on the shack one of the, on the studio and be safe. You know, that now it's a big concern. And we still have the DT1 that Warren did a shoot at a while ago. And you know, it's a great microphone for live. If you have the, uh, the grill on, you can unscrew the grill. That's why it's called dual top. Make it an instrument microphone. It's a, it's a dynamic fan on power. Um, mic so you get better frequency response and, and more output gain. Okay, well, thank you guys for coming. Hey, what's up everybody? We're here at NAMM with Adam. Hey! And from Adrian as well. Hey! hey. hey. So what have you seen that's really been uh, key for you? For me, the key, um, traveling gear, having a mobile record studio, I checked the 500 racks to see what's going on. So BAE have some amazing products that I consider to get into my camper van. This is what I really liked. Um, I saw a DAW that allows you, I think it was called Dawn, that allows you to interact with all DAWs. Means I record in Pro Tools, somebody else get the files, somewhere else in Logic. Right. Yeah, so it connects all DAWs in one. Oh. So this will be very interesting. Yeah. We are still testing. Very interesting. Yeah, we'll make our lives easier, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. And I think the third thing would be wireless, amazing headphone, headphone amplifiers. Right. That's great because I have a little space in my camper van and cables break 
So this will be very helpful. Work, working over Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth, bigger data volume, right. great sound. Much more stable as well. Yeah, yeah man. That's, that's really clever. I like that. Absolutely. What about you? What do you like? So, um, obviously I've seen the guys at Laney. Um, they've got a new amp coming out, which I was a part of. A lot of the things that I've been working on for a long time are all coming together now. And yeah. I'm seeing the guys at NAM with their products, they're really proud. At the Two Notes booth, they've got their new uh, preamp with the, all the valve preamp. Oh, wow. And they just showed off the first version of their new cab software, which is very cool. Yeah. And who else? Audience. I was with them all day yesterday. The Evo 16, was it? Yeah, that's right. The new Evo 16 will be my new live Saver on the road, looking forward to work on it on Wednesday. Oh, nice. Yeah. Really looking forward to working with all the other things that I've seen at NAM. Really looking forward to getting it out to you guys as soon as we can. Absolutely. And congratulations to the audience for the Tech Award. Yes, Best congratulations. Amazing. Paul, how the devil are you? I'm good, I'm great. Oh my God, watch, watch. People touching. Humans. Oh my God. Human! That's it! Oh, no, no, I don't want to make that That's joke. right. That's completely tacky. <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things is I thought of all these people that were building all these studios and buying all this stuff. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's been two years now. Yeah. So where's all the good music that everybody claimed they were buying all this equipment yeah. for? And it's starting to come out. Yeah, I think, didn't Ryan do three... Uh, I'm, actually, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but I am already. I think he did three albums with yeah. Chili Peppers in two years. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that have actually been doing stuff. So yeah. because it started out as like, uh, but honey, I really need this room. And she says, well, it is COVID. Go ahead and build it. Like, yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, it's just we were just talking off camera about how tomorrow I'm not at the show. Right? Half of me wishes I was and half of me is happy that I'm not. Although actually, to be honest, it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's And the pro audio, this part is more vibrant than the other part of the show. Yeah. We've been going to look at the guitar stuff and it's been okay. And then you come here and it's milling about and everybody's asking really great questions. It's a really good mix of people as well. There's not as many tire kickers and, and people that really aren't yeah. interested. Everybody that's come up to the booth, I've talked to about the stuff, which is really right. interesting because a lot of times you get people just going, what's that? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. They use that to pick your nose. Oh, <laughs> I need one of those. Yeah, it's we, we just did um, an AES panel and we just it was just called Warren Hewitt uh, Modern Music Production with Guests. Didn't even announce who it was. We got 220 people showed up. It's a capacity 90, standing room only, and there was people standing in the hallway trying to sit. And I had amazing guests. I had Mark Daniel Nelson, my friend Christian Kohler, who's a great metal producer. I had Eric Boulanger, as we know, amazing master engineer, and Ken Kelly who recorded that little album called Rumours. Yeah. You, you may yeah. remember it. It did all right. It did all right. Yeah, yeah, it did all right. Yeah. The yeah. biggest Rumor selling album of all time or something small yeah. like that, yeah. And it was insane. And I just, and the questions were fantastic and everybody was engaged. I think, I think people made some decisions. There's a lot of things that don't exist anymore. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that people really missed. And I think they're glad that it's back. Yeah. But there's other things that I don't think people care about. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that I've cut out of my life. Yeah. It's, some, it's like, you do this, and when I get done, I don't go out and party and stuff like that. I just go back to my apartment, because I want to be alone. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, no, I, I did the same thing. <clears throat> yeah. Last night, I went back and did emails, put Downton Abbey on in the background and listened to music. So I had the visuals of Downton Abbey, I'm listening to Miles Davis, and I'm doing emails. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is what we did for the last two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's a good mix. But I love this. I like people. I no, like this is people. Good. I, I, I came back here, you know, have to do the business. I can't build that many consoles a year because I build them myself. Right. So I'm good there. I've got a couple new products, but I came back to see all my friends. Yeah. You know, so that was good. And every time I, every time I hug somebody, I, I, it, I feel that much better. Yeah. It's really an interesting thing. It's been I, great. You know. It's really good. I came back a few weeks ago and I went over to Greg Wells' studio to, to get the console all warmed up. You know. Yeah. And just. Being in the room with him for a while, like we used to talk and stuff, it just made me feel a lot better as a human. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm glad. So you talking know. to new stuff, what do you have? Well, we got a couple of cool things. This, of course, we all know is the stereo module that we have an added feature to it. We have a DAW loop, which is basically inline monitoring. Yeah. But the DAW loop, when you press it, this half the console is monitored, and this half the console is for tracking. Okay, great. And right. you can then flip the faders, so this is now your monitor with 
your panner and this is your tracking level. Nice. So that changed with that module. It still has the thing where you can do um, three buses with three different sounds. Great. You know, great. whatever uh, whatever op amps and transformers you want. Nice. So that's cool. So that's basically that's an upgrade to that module. But the cool thing is we have the immersive module. Yes. And the immersive module, it has the same center part right here. It has three inputs. Mm -hmm. It has an insert with a blend. Yeah. And it has the high and the low pass fil filters. And it has the, the tilting EQ. Nice. All right. But now you get into the good stuff. You start out up here with the upper plane and lower plane panner. Yeah. So you can plan to the ceiling and pan to the floor. If you pan to the floor, you come down here and you've got left, center, right. Then you've got front, side, rear. Nice. Then you have the side panner. Yeah. And you have the rear panner. Nice. So then you can pan it up to the ceiling, and you have quad in the ceiling. So for the most part, and it's a pretty general rule, 7-1 plus 4 is pretty much the, the music thing. Right, right. That's what, you know, that's what uh, all the streaming services want. Movie people are happy with it. Yeah. If you do more than that, they pretty much fold it down to that. Yeah. So yeah. 714 is all you need, and that's what this does, is 714. Fantastic. So that's... Wait, have you started delivering these? Yeah, I've got three of them. I've nice. got three of them. So I've got one, that's Ronald Prince. Yeah. I've got Greg Wells has one. He has one. And then we've got one in a, in a studio called Free Spirit. That's a studio that's going to be a, uh, a working studio and a, and a, and a conservatory for right. learning in uh, North Carolina. That's amazing. And they actually bought they actually bought two consoles. Nice. Yeah, and the, the stereo one has got the forty five degree angle one, like we did with the Terry Lewis console. Yeah, nice. So it looks kind of like the the old, you yeah, know, yeah. it's Delta really mix classic. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have a we have a really cool product. Good. This is. We have called, lots of really cool products. <laughs> this is called the the uh, the collaborator, and what this does is it's got in the back it's got a. Um, Headphone input, it's got two XLR inputs, yep. which can be fed at the same time, yep. and then it has a foot switch. And you got left and right trim and a power supply. On the front, you've got four headphone amps. Each headphone has its own amplifier, and you've got a talkback level with a mic. So if you and I are in the studio and we're writing a song, yep. we got headphones on, yep. and it's otherwise quiet in the room, you turn that up, and we can just talk like we're talking now with the headphones on. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're in a situation where, while you're, <clears throat> while you're talk, while you're working, you're actually playing stuff through speakers as well. There's a foot switch, and you use a standard sustained foot switch. Yeah. And when you step on it, it turns it on, just like a talkback mic. Nice. But you can bleed that in. So it's called the collaborator. So when we're collaborating, we can talk. We don't have to do this. Right. right. When we're talking. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. So this is going to be, uh, I think, three ninety nine. Great. Yeah. So then you have this. This has been rumored to exist for a long time. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> so this is the monitor controller. This does fit into a Slate Raven. Okay. Uh huh. It has on the back. It has your inputs and outputs. Yep. And your speaker trims, which yep. are tucked away so nobody can mess with them. <laughs> and you basically have, this is this particular panel is set up for my console, so it has stereo A, B, C, and Grandmaster. Yep. And then you've got four external inputs. One of them can be external or it can be Bluetooth, or it can be eighth inch. Nice. And the fifth one is the Bluetooth input. Great. So you have Bluetooth. Then you got volume up and volume down. You stop, start, like that. So wait there, sorry, what's Bluetooth uh, this configuration is, This is the mean? configure, so when you hit this, yeah. that's when it goes into the oh, okay, pairing yeah. mode. Okay, and I you can press yeah, it and yeah, hold yeah. it, yeah. it drops the phone. If you press it and hold it for 10 seconds, it wipes everything out. Okay. So if you get a phone call, you want to press that and hold it, otherwise everybody's going to hear your call. I've had that happen. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and we say that like 10 times. Then you have a headphone. The headphone monitors this, and under the panel, you can adjust, you can set this up so it's either pre or post. Okay. And then if you press that in, then you got a headphone in on the back. Yeah. So then you can put your Q-Mix in there. Nice. Or if you're using like the Slate headphones, you can use the, the, the software and run it in your headphones. Nice. Very nice, same, same headphone amp as this. Great, as a collaborator. Then you've got 
three this speakers. Yep. And you got an LFE on off switch. Right. Okay. Over here, you've got talk back and dim. Yep. The same mic circuit is in there. Yep. And you've got the LFE control, you got your mic gain, and you got your talk back level. These are all adjusted with your thumbs, and nobody can mess with it. Right. Then what you do is you come in the back with, you know the, the, the uh, AS, EBU, uh, D sub cables? Goes 4 XLR in, 4 XLR out. Yep. You use one of those, you bring your audio in, yep. and you bring your output to your Q amps. Nice. And now you can talk to the four Q amps, or you can monitor them in the speakers to set them up. Nice. So that's added on. Now we make a smaller version of this that doesn't have the top row and it doesn't have this. Nice. And it still fits in the Raven slot. So it's a real simple one. How much is this? For, this is uh, 995. The, the lower price one is going to be 499 or 399. No, right. 499. Yeah, 499. I mean. You get this, maybe a 900 series rack for all your pre's and stuff. You got yourself a little mini. Yeah, it's, it's cool. cool. And this also has an interface. So if you're refurbishing an old console, mm -hmm. this has an interface that has solo audio in and, and solo and talk right. and dim. So if you hit solo on the console, it sends the audio into here and this switches over to that. So that's kind of cool. Great. We got the immersive one coming out. We've had like, you know, That'll be huge. When's that coming out? It's coming out soon. It's all the boards are done. Yeah. We're just waiting for. We gotta decide on a chip because every time we decide on a chip and write code, the chip's not available. Yeah. We're getting some. Some of the stuff that I've been buying has 66 week lead times. Wow. That's like. It's like you know. You want to say to these guys, do you know that's more than a year? Yeah. Yeah. So we finally found one, and we're starting to do the coding on it. Great. So all the boards are in, like I said, all the switches are in, all the parts are in, we just have to put it together. Well, we need to come and visit you in Nashville and film yeah. the whole operation. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Well, I have, you'll see one of those machines in yeah. the oven, and then I have all my other design stuff upstairs. So Nice. I built it all myself. So the other thing we did, we, started to have, we decided we were going to have some fun because, you know, the console is made of buckets. Yeah. And this is the EQ bucket right here. Yeah. So you can have faders, inputs, EQs, and you can have another EQ, you can have meters, whatever you want. And I thought, you know what? This thing is like, it's a, it's a bucket by itself. So I decided to put an ear kit with it so it fits in a rack, or put a handle on it. Yeah. So you can buy this now. You get, with this, you get an empty bucket. Yeah. You get a handle and you get the ears and yeah. a power supply yeah. for 400 bucks. Oh, and nice. It's an eight channel, basically, it's, we call it the bucket. That's got to be one of the most competitively priced. It is, because this is the same thing that goes in the console. So I buy these things by the hundreds. So I and I trust you on the power supply, because the thing that always lets 500 series racks down is they have crap cheap power yeah, supply. Power supply does two and a half amps. Yeah, nice. So it'll be enough. Yeah. So yeah, it's just going to say, bring me the bucket. Yeah, bring me the bucket. Blender? Yeah, the blender, now this has been the big lie, because I say every year that I'm going to bring this out, and I am. The boards are being made right now, the yeah. chassis are being made, it's going to be a little shorter. Yeah, yeah. But it does work, we got all the panels in stock, these are really cool panels. This is a, it's a, it's a company that does the extrusions, yeah. and then they also do the mylar, but they, they set the mylar back. They mill yeah. down the aluminum like yeah. five mils and they set the mylar in it so you can't pick at the edge. Right. So this whole thing is done like that. And we highlighted the screws. It really looks sexy. So all of our rack stuff is gonna look like this. Nice. So that's that's very cool. So we got a couple other things coming out that, that, in the rack format. They're gonna be fun. And they're so, all gonna have the same box. So for this, are you, you're routing multi-effects units in here. You've so, yeah, you've wet got, and dry. And you have a dry in, you have a dry in and a wet in, yeah. and then you've got your, your result out. So perfect for people that maybe have old consoles with three or four auxiliaries, yeah. and they need extra access to or all their anybody that's got, anybody that has a, like a, a Fairchild, or they've got an 1176, yeah. and they want to side chain it yeah. while yeah. they're tracking. Because yeah. what this does is it has an in and a through, yeah. and then it has the, the wet and an out. Yeah. So each, four, four XLRs for each. Take your old 1176, nuke the crap out of it, and then just blend that back in parallel. Blend it back in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Paul. You rock. Another hug. Another hug. You're the man.
We'll come and visit you in Nashville. Yes, you should. Yeah. And come down and have some Thai food. Oh, yeah. Always good for Thai food. And Nina makes the best. Yeah. So long. Farewell. Happy design. Au revoir. Adios. Cheers. Oh, look, the, the, the queen wave. Yeah. The, the, you know yeah. why they do that? Yeah, because it's exhausting. This is, a, this is a fun fact. It's because if you do this all day long, you get carpal tunnel syndrome. Yeah, yeah. If you do this, you don't. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they teach you to do that. Yeah. Two scenes. Adios. Ciao. Goodbye. Manny, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good We're to be like seen. Rem reminiscing about the good old days. The good old the days. Studio. Of Nicky Flores. Oh, Josh my gosh. Hogan. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know what? I also recorded that Frey uh, cover of the Kanye song. Uh, hard, you hard, that? Hardless. Yeah, yeah, I recorded Dude, that. That's still one of my favorite covers ever. Ah, well, thank you. That was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. when we did the snare, that's just, um, that's Ben turning the snare on and off. It's like a th it was a real pain in the butt to do. So much compression to get it to print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I didn't know you worked on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still yeah. talk about that track. Like, oh, thank you. Because I mixed the original. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, that year I did three versions of that song, and still the version you guys did yeah. is still one of my favorites. I mean, and then I ended up working with Chris Allen, who also did it. Did you mix right. that one yes. as well? Yes, yep. So yeah. you mixed all of them? Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Cat, that's great. Know, it's like, talk, talk about uh, monopolizing that song, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Great, great. I think with, uh, the, 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 with the version you mixed, that was the first ever single to chart in the top 40 on digital downloads only. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow, congrats. Yeah. That's, no, I, congrats I, I to you. Know, I didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about your headphones. Man, you know, so I've always wanted something that I could actually mix records on. Yeah. Right. And the, the reason why, is nowadays you have your laptop, yeah, and we're poor. I mean, you can build a studio anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The one thing you can't take with you is your speakers. I mean, you could, but it would yeah. be, you know, every room's different. Yeah. So now I always wanted to have a headphone where I can travel with that was good enough for me to mix on. Yeah. There's a lot of headphone manufacturers out there, yeah. Uh, but I feel like a lot of them are more about being the consum consumer, yeah. as they should. Yeah. But I wanted something where I could actually utilize the workout, yeah. and uh, and I can put them in my bag. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are tough. You know. Yeah. So the fact that we were able, Odyssey is yeah. crazy enough to allow me to <laughs> work with them, yeah. uh, and come up with something where I can actually go anywhere and yep. mix on. Right. It's a dream come true. So for me now, I can be in the hotel room. I can be anywhere. I can be in my car, and nice. have and make crucial decisions for you know in the creative process. It's a dream come true for me. Right. So this is how it came about. Heard of, I first heard the LCD Access five years ago, and Mark Cohen, which is here somewhere, I, I, I called him back and I'm like, fuck, dude, this is the best headphone I've ever heard. But I didn't say but. If you ever want to collaborate on something that could be useful for studio creators, yeah. let me know. Uh, because the current one is for audiophiles, which is great. Yeah. And then, you know, five years later, you know, here we are with, we made the design sleeker, we can, you know, a lot lighter. Yeah. You can wear it for hours at a time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can, so when we got, you know, we started, we started getting the, you know, kind of changing the design, I was like, hopefully the sound doesn't change. Yeah. And I feel like the sound is as, you know, I mean, as good as any of their other products. So. Right. Like Better, you're involved, come on. <laughs> the best thing they make. Yeah. You know, co-signing off of a, a headphone, I thought I would never, ever yeah. say so, that or do that. But, you know. Yeah, well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And you it's know, great to see you. Yeah, so good to see you too, yeah. man. Yeah. I love like sharing stories that I had no idea, you know, like I, I would love to capture them all because it's, you know, yeah. that was that was what, 10 years ago? 10 years ago, yeah. 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 Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Fantastic. good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I finally found someone. I ran into someone who knows where the good beer is. My man, Matt. And I do know where the good beer is because my favorite part of Nam is where the good beer is. Right. That is beer number, be honest, 99. 666. It's actually my first one. 0.666, because they gave me like a third of one and I had them, you know, just move it up to get the 0.666. Yeah. But it is actually hard to get good beer in the US, I gotta tell you. Not at Nam. Not at, even at Nam. And also at Musikmesse, I remember being drunk 
around 1 p.m. because every second, like at Frankfurt Musik Messe, you know, every second booth, you know, there's beer, so, sure, you know, here, got a shout out to the guys at Rev Amplifiers from Canada. Those were, that was the only booth where I was offered a cold beer. That's shocking because Canadian beer usually sucks. I mean, it was the only beer available. I didn't care. Okay, so so yeah. the only beer available isn't going to suck. Right. Right. So okay. that was a disappointment compared to what I'm used to. No, but nice to meet you, man. Yes, what, dude. It's a pleasure. What, what was your, what was the thing here? At Honestly, Nam? my favorite thing at Nam, and I, I uh, tragically I haven't gone and seen it today, and I should before I leave. But for the past two days, the Steve Vai guitar, the Hydra. Oh, that is my favorite thing without a doubt. Okay. Because it's ludicrous. It's got three necks. It's got a seven string. It's got a twelve string. It's got the bass, and it's got the harp, and it's powered by a tube preamp that outputs every individual output of each neck, which is just mind wild. blowing. It's why it's just it's, it's so Steve Vai. It's yeah. wild, but it's absolutely amazing. I, mi I missed that one. Oh uh, well. I mean, before you leave, we gotta go check it out. I, I, I missed them. They have the they have twelve the AX sevens plugged into the top of the guitar. Oh wow, really? Oh no no, and the light. It, it's the most ridiculous looking Steve Vai thing ever, and I love it. Right. So that without doubt was my favorite thing. What was yours? It was talking to the guy from Antares and telling them that Autotune <laughs> is still not working in Cubase. <laughs> That's you, how you win fans, always. <laughs> What I usually used to do, and this is because, I mean, it wasn't random. I, I went to school with like a lot of people who work at Isotope, but I would go and I would drink a lot of beer. Of course. And then I would go to the Isotope booth and I would tell them my grievances. <laughs> <laughs> right. I even do that when I'm sober. Yes, but when you do it with beer. It works even better. For it's, you. It's more passionate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, greetings from them. Uh, let's get another beer. See yes. you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.